very few, very first countries uh, which uh, offered full recognition to Pakistan. And late President Truman wrote a very joyful and uh, excellent letter to late Qaid Azam Muhammad Rijana. When I was a child, Excellency, I remember this friendship from a very memorable program known as PL 480. Now, PL 480 was a program under which Pakistan received, I believe, wheat parcels from the United States. And that's how this long journey of friendship started and it touched epics of glory and at times, you know, it dipped to low points. We know the reasons and this is not the time to go into those reasons. We have been discussing it privately and publicly during different points of time. But let me say very sincerely and honestly that we really want to build and reset these relations back to normal and friendly relations based on trust, respect and mutual understanding. Of course, there is a file on your part and there is a file on our part. But if we have to move forward, and we must, then I'm sure we'll find ways and means to warm up our relations to levels we have seen in the past. And I think you made a very pertinent point that our relations should not be seen through the prism of Afghanistan or through the lens of China. Our relations, they stand on its own. And you have uh, enumerated various uh, programs and projects. I would add on to that. When Pakistan was facing worse kind of power outages, Prime Minister Nawaz Sharif decided to spend from our own uh, scarce resources to invest uh, another 5,000 megawatts. Finance Minister Hazagdar was, uh, was, he opposed it tooth and nail. He said, I don't have the money. But uh, obviously, now this is democracy. You know, he had his own pertinent point, and Prime Minister Nawazshrif thought, no, on top of what we are uh, uh, getting in, in terms of CPAC projects, let's not uh, delay it, because if there is another dharna, so to say, then uh, the CPAC program will be derailed, and by the time of elections 2018, we wouldn't, uh, show, we wouldn't be able to show anything to the people of Pakistan. And Mr. Mahbub will be our very, you know, severe critic that what this government has done. So what I'm saying is, as a result of that program, that decision, 5,000 megawatts, out of that, 3,000 megawatts, 3,500 megawatts, was installed by GE, United States uh, blue, chip, blue chip, chip company. And it was the most transparent investment and the prices were the lowest in the world. It can't be beaten as I speak. And in the fastest possible time, these plants were installed. That's how we want to rebuild our friendship in terms of transparency, in terms of trust, in terms of mutual respect. And I want to assure you, my friend, Ambassador, that I'll be the most ardent supporter of this friendship. Let bygones be bygones. As I said, there is a lot you would want to say or your side would want to say, and on our side. But as long we open this and renew this friendship through honest dialogue, through sincere dialogue, and uh, serious dialogue, 
I can tell you we will not go wrong. And uh, I was in Washington, no, New York, with my colleagues, had uh, very productive, short but very productive meetings with uh, Secretary uh, Lincoln and of course uh, my meeting with uh, President Biden was again very reassuring. I thank them, I want to thank again uh, for the support, for the program which we have offered to uh, flood affected people, $53 billion and now uh, add on to it $10 million, million dollars announced by Secretary Blinken meeting uh, our uh, young and enterprising Foreign Minister Blavel Bhutto. We are very thankful to you. But then I have to say and make a couple of comments. One, that this disaster ambassador is not of our making. We are a developing country and you mentioned that uh, United States contributed $32 billion uh, to Pakistan in the past, which is correct. And I tell you honestly, I tell you honestly, without any fear of contradiction, that had we used these $32 billion, $32 billion in the right direction, properly, well planned, and uh, properly supervised, we would have uh, broken our begging bowl, honestly. But then, there's no point in crying over the spilt milk. Let's move forward. We want to stand on our own feet through dint of hard work. We will burn our midnight oil. We will work untiringly. And this nation, Pakistani nation, is a very strong nation. People are very courageous, very brave, very hard working. Our population is a mix of 50% male and 50% female. They are no more uh, no coffee-going folks. They are now very educated, very hardworking. They are bankers, they are scientists, they are teachers, and they are politicians. Two politicians, three, four, five sitting in front of me. This is Pakistan, Islamic Republic of Pakistan, where there is complete freedom of action and I think uh, their contribution is uh, not only valuable but uh, uh, extremely, extremely helpful. So what I'm saying is, Ambassador, United States is our biggest trading partner. You have been extremely kind and your teams have come to Pakistan. Uh, the head of uh, USAID, uh, who just had uh, her uh, birthday, and I congratulated her and said many, many more such occasions. She was here, she went to uh, the flood affected areas, she visited and she was absolutely devastated. She said, uh, Prime Minister, this is horrifying. And then uh, her visit was equally matched by actions, by practical actions. We are very grateful. But the point at issue is that this catastrophic situation is not made by us. It is man-made, but not made by us. And as I speak, four million acre area where standing crop of cotton, rice, sugarcane, and date, all gone. Billions of dollars. 1,600 people have left this world along with uh, 400 children, you know, girls and boys. More than a million, uh, you know, mud houses or pakka houses, they have been absolutely thrown to the um, Arabian Sea. And more than a million livestock drowned. Life savings of people have gone away and they are living under tents and under open sky uh, waiting for help coming from somewhere and it is our duty, moral duty, my political duty, my responsibility, my colleagues, my governments, all um, uh, outfits 
departments, authorities, institutions. We are working hard and working overtime to serve them. But uh, whatever we do is not enough. The yawning gap between demand and between requirement and supply is widening by the hour. And this is the first phase. And the final phase has yet to come, phase of rehabilitation and reconstruction, and which uh, uh, Sherry Rahman Sahib always uh, keeps on telling me, it has to be, Prime Minister, uh, resilient infrastructure, it has to be uh, adaptive. And of course she's right. And that costs money. There's no free lunch. Therefore, I would, uh, you know, again request you, as a friend, you are a great friend, and your country has supported Pakistan, I mean, in a very big way. It is, it is clear, loud and clear, to all and sundry, that now we need international community to stand by us and support us. We're not asking for uh, sums of monies. We're asking for relief. We're asking for funds to uh, rebuild our infrastructure. We're asking for our people that they get their uh, jobs back, livelihood, agriculture, industry, commerce, trade, export. For that, we need incentives, relief moratoriums. This is our right. We have not brought this uh, disaster upon ourselves. It's nature. We are not blaming anybody. We are a country which is under 1% of carbon emission. So I wouldn't want to uh, go into details and have a, a lengthy speech. Uh, obviously, I think uh, soft drinks are waiting for them. Soft drinks, I mean. And of course, you know, uh, you know snacks. Of course, they're waiting for them. Uh, what I'm saying is that we want to build our wonderful, we want to go back to those wonderful times with the United States of America, where our relations were uh, not beholden to others. It had its own standing, own structure. And I would work most willingly to build that relation. Thank you very much. Pakistan, America, those days and that